Hey fellow vinyl friends, it's Diana back again with another episode of my Unreason Rotation series. This time it's talking all the jazz. I just thought I'd make a whole episode dedicated to my latest jazz playlist, uh, so to say. Uh, fittingly today, say hi to Lee Morgan latest coffee painting. Um, there's um, a documentary uh, out there called um, I Call the Morgan, uh, which is tracking the life of Lee Morgan and his wife Helen Morgan and the situations that led to the um, incident that happened uh, that led to his death. She shot him and um, it, yeah, it's centered about, uh, around an interview with Helen Morgan, which is quite interesting and I can highly recommend uh, to uh, watch this um, because it paints a really interesting picture. Uh, it's available on Netflix as well as doing several screenings in several theaters around the globe, so yeah, I can highly recommend the documentary. The first is Ferris Sanders' Love and Us All, originally released on Impulse in 1974. This is the 2016 Japan repress. This record features two set long tracks and uh, the cast of. I have to read this because it's not standing anywhere here. Pharaoh Sanders on Tina Sex flute, uh, Joe Bonner on piano, James Branch on flute, Cecil McBee on bass, Norman Connors on drums, Ron Skillian, James Mintoon on Badal Wall on percussion. These are two set long tracks and it's kind of like two sides of coin. One is really melodic and spiritual and harmonic and the other is really wild and fierce and quite layered, I would say. Yeah, the first side is Love is Everywhere, which is kind of a seamless uh, progression from the track Love Will Find a Way from the 1972 Pharaoh release that he's singing here and uh, the track just bursts of happiness and joy and it's really beautiful and really thriving, I would say. To John, uh, the B-side is just a free jazz gem, I would say. It has really intense saxophone outbursts and um, really driving percussion. So this record has really kind of two different sides, but I really enjoy both of them. featuring Stanley Cowell uh, Marching On, which was released in 1967, 1967 oh, uh, on Strata East. Um, this is the 2017 Everland Jazz reissue, which uh, I was really waiting for because um, it's licensed by Strata East and it's, the recordings were taken from the master tapes. The cast here is Albert Heath on drums and lead flute and African double reed, um, Jimmy Heath on flute, tenor sax and soprano sax, Percy Heath on baby bass and bass violin, and Stanley Cole on acoustic piano and marimba. Also featured here but not listed are Tommy Perone on guitar, Tumna on percussion, Keith Copeland on drums 
in der Kyria Tana on Drums and Jeff Patton on Piano. The uh, first side, um, especially the first uh, three tracks, um, Warm Valley, Tafadali and Watergate Blues, have a heavy blues vibe, um, while the last track, uh, Mayum, is really soulful. And the second side is the Smiling Billy Suite um, with four parts and this is what really stands out for me in this record. You have a really prominent bass violin which leads you into the theme and um, which will overspan all four parts and soon the theme will sound very familiar to some ears because it's the one love sample mastered um, it's precisely part two which was um, sampled and i will needle drop it so you can hear it and it's just beautiful and soulful the whole smiling billy suite is pure bliss i would say yeah from part two and part three on it's getting more sinister and intense and um, it has a great variety presents Marika. Um, this is a 2015 release on Bohemian Drips. This is an Marika's an improvised free jazz trio from Istanbul, Turkey. And it features Balas Tan Özemek on bass, uh, Berke Can Özkan on drums and percussion, and Kohan Futachi on alto and tenor saxophone and flute. Yeah, hard to pronounce. This is their debut record, and um, Bohemian Rips invited the trio to um, work with them in the unique acoustics of an old Kindle, Berliner Kindle brewery in Berlin with massive copper tanks. The LP was recorded live and in binaural audio with these 3D Kunstkopf microphones. So uh, when you listen to this uh, record with headphones, you have a feeling of being right in the middle of all the musicians, which is pretty cool. This is how the record looks. And it came with a booklet, which... Oops, Where, uh, yeah, here you can see the uh, microphones, the 3D Kunstkopf uh, microphones. And here you see the trio. And if you look closely, you see in the back the massive uh, brewery copper tanks, uh, where in the brewery where this was recorded. Yeah. This is some kind of really dark and sinister and atmospheric one-of-a-kind record because um, if you listen on it uh, on headphones it's really intense and um, you have two themes here side a is the wolf uh, side b it's the sheep and um, it especially says here that headphones are recommended and i will needle drop it but um, i will also put the event camp link below so maybe you can just hear it on um, headphones because I would recommend it because the acoustics are just 
specifically made for the listen with headphones. Yeah, it has some really unique atmosphere to it and um, I absolutely love the interesting artwork here. making rounds in the VC and that's what I deserve because it's a great record and that's Blameful Isle, uh, this heart of our heart and Urban Waves record uh, which was released last week. I think most people here know Blameful Isle. Blameful Isles is um, a jazz outlet from Sweden and um, they are well known here because of the last record Strange but not entirely unattractive uh, which is a really great free jazz record. Um, which I'm really sad I did not uh, get. When I got aware of it, it was completely sold out and they are highly sought after and really hard to get and really expensive because they just made a small run of 100 pieces, I think. This one was released in a run of 150 pieces and the last time I looked on Bandcamp there was just one record remaining so, so I don't even know if uh, it's uh, still available. And, fun fact, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Parker, the producer from Germany here, um, has mastered this and the last record. Which just proves that the music world is a small world. And yeah. I absolutely love the gorgeous cover here. And from the cover you can kind of guess the, the direction it takes uh, because it's again really beautiful uh, free jazz improvised stuff but um, with a more spiritual vibe and it's really timeless spiritual I would say. Um, it kind of reminds me of the 70s spiritual uh, records I love so um, I absolutely adore this record and I will do some needle drops. So if you see a copy of this left somewhere just get it because it's awesome. Yeah. 
next one is Alba Dialer Bells, which was released in 1965 um, over ESP. This is the 1978 uh, Japan repress. Yeah, this one was recorded at the Town Hall in uh, New York live. Um, it's a single-sided album, which was kind of strange at first time because you listen to it and think, oh, that's nice. And then you put it up and like, okay, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the release year 1965, this was released in over 20 variations, um, various color stuff, including a transparent vinyl, and um, this was a really novel move at the time, especially in the avant-garde jazz scene, so uh, the records, uh, the original records are pretty sought after. And we have um, Albert Eiler on saxophone, Donald Eiler on trumpet, Charles Tyler on sax, uh, Louis Worrell on bass and Sunny Murray on percussion. Recorded live on the 1st of May in 1965. We have the uh, review here on it, which is pretty funny. You have 20 minutes of music here and I think um, this piece captures the fierce spirit of Albert's work perfectly. Uh, I learned that it's quite a thing with Albert Alice's work, uh, either you love it or you hate it, um, but um, I really love his avant-garde stuff and this is no exception. <laughs> Offshore or Hummus, um, released in 1976 over Plena, a German label. Plena was kind of a really small label and they just made some various jazz related records. Uh, this is jazz fusion, uh, really groovy and funky sometimes and um, really great record. Uh, the band just released two albums. Uh, I think the second album they made afterwards is quite different. Uh, it's a German band consisting of Rüdiger Schulz on Tina Sax and Soprano Sax, Ottmar Desch on E-Piano and Synthesizer, Ede Brum und Rüter on <laughs> Electric Bass and Gernot Meyer on Drums. <laughs>
to the night flea market a few weeks ago, uh, one that is just happening once a year and the last two years we were finding lots of records there so we were totally excited but this time we just bought one record and that's The Art of Zumba of Chicago, uh, Reese and the Smooth Ones, actual number 29, released in 1969. This is the original. This record was recorded in Paris, as uh, most of the records uh, which came out over Actuel, and features all the members playing lots of little instruments beside their mainstays. Um, Lester Bowie is playing trumpet, flugelhorn, bass, drum and horns, Bosco Mitchell is playing soprano sax, uh, alto sax, bass sax, clarinet, flute, cymbals, gongs, conga drums, locks, bells, siren, whistle, steel drum, etc. <laughs> Joseph Jarman is playing soprano, sax, alto sax, clarinet, oboe, flute, marimba, vibes, conga drums, bells, whistles, gongs, siren, guitar, etc. Malachi Ferros is playing bass, fender bass, ben banjo, lock drum, sitar and percussions and a lot more which are not listed here. So set one consists of Reese, written by Roscoe Mitchells and the Smooth Ones part one by Lesser Bowie. And set two also consists of Reese and the Smooth Ones part two. But the songs are flowing seamlessly into each other. Uh, for me this record is really harmonic. Um, we have a lot of more quiet calm sections alternating with more dissonant and experimental parts. Yeah, I think this record is really captivating with a great variety. Um, not as challenging as you might think of the Art Ensemble of Chicago, or maybe I just get used to it, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely one of my favorite outlets by them, which is highly recommended. As everything I'm showing here, um, I rarely show a, a record which I do not recommend, so yeah. My Gifts, uh, released in 1973 over Strata East, again um, a recent Avalon Jazz uh, reissue which is licensed by Strata East and uses the original master tapes, so I just thought i go for it. Um, yeah, you have this sleeve here and the record with the Strata East and the Avalon Jazz logo, logo mixed. This album was actually uh, recorded at the same time uh, as Karma, but for some reason the release was pushed back until 1973. You have Ned Battles on percussion, Chief Bay on African drums, Sunny Fortune on alto sax, Billy Hart on drums, uh, Howard Johnson on tuba, <laughs> Cecil McBees on bass, Pharaoh Sanders on saxophone and percussion, Majid Shabazz on drums, Sonny Sherrock on guitar, Ceron Norris Jones on bass, Lonnie Liston Smith on piano, Leo Thomas on vocal and percussion and Tony Wilde on percussion. The first track here is Prince of Peace, uh, which is Leon Thomas' poem theme, uh, which uh, he also used on Hamala four years earlier, um, which I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with. And yeah, for me it's as beautiful as Hamala. Uh, some even say it's too harmonic and too cheesy like, but um, I absolutely love it and this, for me it's a really great spiritual joyful track, <laughs> which I really enjoy. Then we have the 12 minute long balance song, which is basically the most funny title name for such an unbalanced track. 
uh, because um, the track is really aggressive and chaotic and it's the most freak out I've heard Pharaoh Sanders until now. It's a really badass song I would say because Sonny Sherrock is completely crazy and it's such a heavy song uh, which I would have never expected on a Pharaoh Sanders record but I absolutely love it. And then the B-side is one track, uh, 28 minutes and 50 seconds long. Easy for some, which is really beautiful and experimental. And um, Leo Thomas is doing his yodeling stuff. Uh, you have really soulful sex patterns and really wild uh, Sonny Sherrock. Basically the perfect ingredients for a great free jazz spiritual piece. Loving never sees, McCoy China Sahara, which was released in 1972 over Milestone. It's original pressing. Um, McCoy China is playing piano here and Koto on Valley of Life, flute and percussion. Uh, Sunny Fortune is playing soprano sax, alto sax and flute. Calvin Hill is playing bass and percussion and reeds. And Alphonse Mouzon is playing drums and trumpet and reeds and percussion. Um, yeah, what stands out here is the use of non-Western instruments, uh, which was kind of a different approach to the omnipresent uh, fusion at that time and the um, use of electric instruments because everything here is um, acoustic. This is a highly energetic record, I would say. Um, it McCoy Tyler delivers ecstatic solos here. Um, the members are playing really passionately together. Valley of Life features uh, this Japanese koto and flute play, um, which is really great. Sahara is an absolutely awesome uh, 23 minute long track and um, I think for me it's a really outstanding album because um, it's kind of McCoy Tyner finding his own pace and um, I really love it. Thank you. 